James Wise from Holden Wise. Today we have another episode of the Ask James Wise series. Today's question comes from an investor named Ali Lickball. Hey James, thanks for your response. I had answered some other questions for him. What are your thoughts about the larger multifamily apartment complexes? 30 plus units all the way up to 100 unit complexes. Let's dive in. Allie, that's a great question. As a matter of fact, here at Holton Wise, myself and the rest of the staff, we get that question all the time. Our general manager, Valerie Chambers, actually receives that question so many times. She submitted a similar question to the Ask James Wise series just so she can have it answered easily so we don't have to go through it over and over. What Valerie says was, I've noticed that a lot of our investors start off buying residential properties from us, then decide to move into commercial properties once they use all 10 of their residential mortgages. I was thinking that it'd be a great idea to make a video explaining the different nuances that an investor will incur when they make that leap into the bigger commercial investment properties. So, you know, similar questions, similar concepts. We've received variations of those questions many, many times. This is the deal. You have residential properties, okay? And then when you move on to commercial properties, it's a totally different ball game. Both are great. Neither one is necessarily better than the other. I think what's important is you need to focus on where you're at in your investment life cycle. If you're a brand new investor, I think you wanna go towards residential properties first. You see, the biggest reason people like myself and the millions and millions of other real estate investors out there chose real estate as their primary investment vehicle is because the financing, leverage, or use of other people's money is second to none in the investment space. You can't go into a bank and get a loan to invest in the stock market. You can't go into a bank and get a loan to invest in Bitcoin. You can, however, go into a bank and get a loan to invest in real estate. And when you're getting a loan, you can get the very best loan when it's residential real estate. You see, single family homes all the way up to four unit apartment buildings fall under residential financing guidelines. Those are those great mortgages we're talking about. Fixed interest, 30 year terms very, very low interest that is tax deductible. The downside, the biggest downside to these amazing residential loans is you're capped at 10 of them. Now, obviously, like most people, you're gonna burn that first one on the house you live in. So that's gonna leave you nine more mortgages. You should utilize all nine of those mortgages first. These are smaller properties. You're getting the very best financing. Obviously, when you're buying investment real estate, you want to buy it right. You do make the money buying it right. But the risks are very, very low. When you're buying single family homes using a residential mortgage, you can't really buy it all that wrong. Okay, the bank is going to go ahead and do an appraisal. So you're really never overpaying. Overall, it's probably going to be a pretty decent investment for you over the long haul because the concept itself is incredibly simple and foolproof. You purchase a property using someone else's money, the bank, and then someone else, your tenants, they pay off that loan for you. The appraisal guarantees that the price of that property was probably what that property is actually worth. Yes, real estate prices, they go up, they go down. But generally speaking, you're going to get a loan. Someone else is going to pay off that loan. And at the end of it, you have a free and clear asset. Very, very hard to lose a ton of money on these residential properties. So when you've used all nine of those mortgages on your investment properties, again, theoretically, we are assuming that you've used your first mortgage on your personal home, which is absolutely what you should do. You should never consider investing in real estate until you own your own home. No matter what, whether you're owning a property or renting a property, anywhere you live, you're paying a mortgage. Do you want it to be your mortgage that you're paying or do you want it to be your landlord's mortgage? Of course you want it to be your mortgage. That's why you're watching me. That's why you're watching this channel because you understand the power of leverage, the power of real estate, the power of having other people use their money to grow your net worth. So you have used all 10 of your mortgages on that residential financing. You're capped. Now you got to move up to the big leagues. You got to move into those apartment buildings. Things are going to be a little different. The biggest difference is that financing. Now that we're in the big leagues, we're talking about loans that are amortized over 15, 20, 25 years, but you don't get 15, 20, 25 years to pay them off. You're gonna have to pay them off. The most common thing is typically paying them off in 60 months or five years. That means you're paying a ton of interest and then when you hit year five, 
you have to come up with all the money to pay the entire loan off. Usually you do this by selling or by refinancing. Now, unlike residential properties, when you have 30 years to pay off that loan, I said you really can't, you can make mistakes, but you have 30 years to recoup from those mistakes, you really can't go wrong. Now you only have five years before you have to come up with all that money. Okay, so if there was a shift in the market one way or the other, you have some serious risk. What if you don't have that money in your five? What if you can't refinance in your five? Maybe you're not very good at managing the property and all of your rents went down. Now your building value has drastically been reduced because of mismanagement. So I guess what I'm trying to say is the risks are so much higher now because you only have a five year window to make sure everything goes appropriately with this investment unlike a 30 year window with those residential investments. On top of that, the money at play, well, it's obviously gonna be a heck of a lot more. I'm pretty sure 100 unit apartment buildings, 30 unit apartment buildings, they're gonna cost you a lot more money than single family homes or duplexes. We're out here in Cleveland. You could literally buy single family homes for $40,000, $50,000. If you buy a $50,000 single family home and you use a loan, you only need to bring $12,500 to the table. But if you buy a million dollar apartment building, you're probably gonna need to come out of pocket anywhere from $250,000 to $400,000. So on one hand, you're only risking $12,500 and you have 30 years to recruit from any problems. On the other hand, you're risking $250,000 to $400,000 and you have a five year window. On top of that, larger apartment buildings, they are gonna be a little bit more difficult to manage very hard for you to do that on your own. I mean, with a duplex, maybe you have two tenants and they don't get along with each other. One moves out, the other's there, you replace the other tenant, whatever. You get a large apartment building, you know, certain tenants, they start causing fights and things starts happening. And next thing you know, 15 people have moved out. That stuff's tough. It's nothing that experienced companies like Holton Wife can't handle, but I think you need to get your feet wet with the smaller stuff first. Just like you learned how to walk before you ran, just like you put training wheels on your bicycle. Start off small, then move on to the bigger stuff. Other things to factor in when running large apartment buildings, you no longer get free trash. You have to pay for trash. You don't have to pay for the trash in single family homes or duplexes. The tenants, they get their own trash cans and they take them out to the curb on trash day and the city handles that. With an apartment building, you're required to pay for a dumpster. Another thing is snow, single family homes, duplexes, Tenants, they take care of all that on their own. Large apartment complexes, you have a parking lot. You need to take care of that. So you need to get plow trucks in there to make sure your tenants can get in and out of that parking lot. Common areas. Single family home, obviously there's no common areas. A duplex, there's really no common areas. Yeah, you have that basement, but you have a large apartment complex. You need to pay people to go in there and clean up those common spaces weekly. You have hallways, you know, there could be trash in the hallways. You have the area where all the tenants get their mail. You know, there just tends to be tons of mail and debris. You need to vacuum that space. In the winter time, when you have rock salt out on the steps, they're tracking that through the hallway. That's all stuff that you need to take care of. When you have large multi-unit spaces, pest control becomes a major expense. If you have one unit that gets bed bugs, you need to get in there, pay to remove that immediately before it spreads to your entire building and you get a mass exodus. It is very, very, very difficult to remove something like bed bugs when it's infested through an entire building. So you have to nip that stuff in the bud immediately. All things you don't really have to worry about as much with those single family investments. Now this whole video may make it appear like I think investing in the larger stuff is not what you should do. That's not the case. I just want you to know that you should start off investing in the residential properties. As a matter of fact, myself, I really only purchase large investment properties. Why? Because for all those negatives with the financing, there is a huge positive. The amount of money that people will lend you when you get into the commercial investment space is unlimited. You see, when you're getting those residential mortgages, they are gonna look at your income. They're gonna make sure that you can cover the mortgage on all of your properties with or without that tenant rental income. When you get to the commercial space, they are going to look at the income the property produces. They're gonna consider that as income to help pay off the debt. In short, if you could present to a lender a performing apartment building, 
So long as you have the cash to pay for that down payment, the amount of money they're going to loan you is relatively unlimited. And that is how people like myself and other real estate investors have built massive amounts of wealth through real estate because you literally have an unlimited supply of money that a lender is going to give you. So if you really want to explode your career and really grow your net worth, you're going to need to move into those commercial investment spaces. The last thing I want to touch on that is totally different while we're still talking about financing is on those residential loans we talked about earlier, you could more or less live in any one of the 50 states in the US and get a lender who's nationwide who will loan you money for any property in any of the 50 states. That means if you live in California, you could hire a lender in New York to give you a mortgage on a house here in Cleveland. With the commercial stuff, it's a little bit different, it's a little bit more restrictive. You'll typically run into lenders who have very restrictive lending policies. A lot of lenders that are located in Cleveland only want to loan on property that's here in Cleveland. They won't loan on property that's in another state. They also don't like to always loan to people in certain states. Like US Bank, for example. US Bank is a company that a lot of my clients use to buy investment properties here in Cleveland. But US Bank doesn't work with West Coast investors. If you want to buy an apartment building in Cleveland, US Bank has no problem giving you that loan if you live in New York. But if you live in California, it's a no-go because they have no footprint out there and they don't want to deal with investors in California. So when you're researching lenders on these commercial investment properties, you're going to need to hit the phones, you're going to need to do a lot more work to really understand if the lender that you're talking about will loan to you in the state where you live and will loan to you on a property in the state you want to invest in. But once you get through all those additional hurdles, like I said, this is the only path to really growing a gigantic and huge investment portfolio that's going to create enough net worth for you to change your life and create legacy wealth for you and your family for years to come. Ali, Val, and all those other investors who sent me this question or a similar version of this question, I hope that answers your question. For the rest of you who have other questions, check out the other episodes in the Ask James Y series. Or if you don't see your question, simply post it in the comments below and I will make you a video answering your question. Thanks for watching the video. I'm James Wise, co-founder of Holton Wise. If you are interested in hearing more about me and my personal story, how I turned one investment property into a management portfolio valued over $50 million, I want you to go ahead and follow my personal Instagram at James Wise HWPG. I want you to go ahead and click the subscribe button for more real estate deals and educational content, as well as check out some of the other videos we have throughout this channel. As always, I'm James Wise with Holton Wise, and this is Real Estate Investing Made 